Comfort in grief. There is pain and grief when a loved one passes away. As believers, we can draw comfort and strength from the Lord and his word. This simple sermon speak comfort, strength and encouragement to us in such seasons of life. Today, I want to just bring a word of encouragement especially for those who have experienced the loss of a family member or a loved one uh, during this season. The pandemic has impacted many lives in many ways. And uh, one of the things that we are, we are all aware of is that many people known to us, some of us personally, have uh, experienced the loss of a loved one. And you know, uh, it, it is not easy. It is not easy when a family member, a loved one, passes away. And uh, though we are believers, we love the Lord, we also experience grief. We experience the pain of loss, of losing someone we care about, we love, who's part of our family or close to us. And there is pain. We can't deny that. Uh, we can't pretend it's not there. Uh, we all experience that. And, um, you know, as a pastor, one of the most difficult things to do is to do the funeral, to be there for families uh, because you feel what they feel. You feel their pain, and yet you know that it's not something that you can switch on and off. Uh, it's the grief is real. And uh, people have to go through it, and uh, they need it. They need support. Uh, they need love. They need comfort during this period of time. And uh, it is true that this year, 2020, uh, there have been several funerals that we personally uh, have, have been part of, or uh, people as part of our church community who have lost. Uh, family members, and so we've seen that. And what I want to do today in the message is to speak primarily to those of us who have lost loved ones. And so the message today is really about how, about comfort in grief, and how do we as believers find comfort in such moments or seasons or times of grief where, and we are specific, specifically talking about grief, or the pain that comes uh, from ha losing someone who's part of our family, somebody we love and care about. How do we find comfort in times of grief? Now, some of you watching, you may not necessarily have experienced grief through the course of this year. And, uh, but I still want to invite you to listen because the things we learn from the Word of God, we can extend it to people who are going through this time of grief. So whatever we learn, we can make ourselves available to God and say, God, use me as a channel of your comfort to somebody else. So this message, of course, is for people who are going through grief, but even for those of us who uh, may not have experienced that or may not be experiencing it right this moment, yet we could still draw from the Word of God, uh, learn these things so that we can be channels of comfort to somebody else who's going through a time of grief. So I want to invite you also uh, to Join with me as we take some time to be in the Word of God and let God minister to our hearts uh, today. Now, the Bible tells us something very wonderful about our God, the God in whom we believe. It tells us that God is the God of all comfort. And I want us to read several scriptures today. We're going to read, begin by reading 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, the Apostle Paul writes here, he says, Blessed be the God and Father 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and God of all comforts. Notice what he says about God. He says, you know, bless God. Give him praise. Worship him. Love him. Why? Because the God, our God, is the Father of mercies. That means He is the source of abundance of mercy. And He is the God of all comfort. So God is the source of all comfort. Now when you talk about comfort, we're talking about uh, strength, Support, encouragement, uh, we are talking about renewing, renewing of hope, of uh, purpose. So all of this comes, all of this is included in that word comfort. So when, when somebody has experienced the loss of a loved one, they're going through a time of grief. That really is the pain of loss. What do they need? They need comfort. They need support. They need strength. They need encouragement. And they need the renewing of hope, of purpose. Because many times when somebody has you know, uh, is, is experiencing the pain of the loss of, love, of a loved one. They're going through the time of grief. They're grieving. Uh, it is very, uh, the future seems very blur. You know, what do I do next? How do I get up from here and move forward? That seems very blur. They could just sometimes even become very weak. And uh, unfortunately, in some cases, they get trapped in that moment of grief, that they find themselves unable. They don't find strength enough to pick up from where they are and to move forward in some cases. And so that renewing of hope, of purpose is also needed as part of the comfort we bring to somebody. Now, the Bible says that God, our Father, He's a Father of mercies, he is the God of all comfort. That means all the comfort that we need comes from Him. He's able to give us all of that. All the support, the strength, the encouragement, and the renewing uh, that, that somebody needs uh, in their time of grief, God is able to provide. And he continues there, Paul continues in 2 Corinthians 1, chapter, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, verse 4, he says, who comforts us in all our tribulation. That means God comforts us in all our difficulties, in all our challenges. Uh, we are specifically today talking about uh, grief and the, law, the pain from the loss of a loved one. But Sometimes, you know, people need comfort from all kinds of things, all kinds of difficulties that we face. God comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. And that was Paul is saying, you know, God comforts us so that we may be able to comfort other people when they are going through their time of trouble, they're going to their, to their time of difficulty. Isn't that wonderful? That we have such a God who pours his comfort into our lives when we are going through our difficult times so that when other people around us are going through their difficult times, we can pass on the comfort that we have received. We can pass it on to them in their time of trouble. And that's so wonderful. But comfort comes from our God. So what we want to do today is uh, just share a few practical things. And I'm speaking specifically to those who are going through a time of grief. Uh, some things that you and I can do to receive this comfort from God, the one who comforts us in all our tribulation. What can I do to receive that? So God is the source of all comfort. 
How do I receive that into my life so that I can experience the support, the strength, the help, the encouragement, and the renewing that I need? God is able to give it to me. Now, how do I receive it for myself? What are some things that you and I can do to receive comfort in times of trouble when we are going through these difficulties that we all face in life? See, the Bible tells us in James chapter 5 and verse 13, now, James is writing to believers, uh, so uh, it's for you and me. And he says in James 5.13, he says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. So, you know, obviously, God, by the Holy Spirit, writing through James, uh, it recognizes that in a community of believers, there will be people who are in different seasons. Some are going through suffering. They're going through a difficult time. They're going through, as we're talking about, a time of experiencing grief, suffering. Some are they, they're cheerful, they're happy, everything is going great. So he says, you know, if you're going through a time of suffering, what do you do? Pray. If you're happy and you know, you're, you're cheerful, what do you do? Sing to God, sing praises, sing psalms. If you're going through suffering, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. So what's the first thing that I want us to understand of how we receive comfort from God? Pray. Or if we could just say, pour out your heart to God. Pour out your heart to God. Pray. Pour out your heart to God. You know, the pain that you feel, uh, the grief that you are experiencing, no other human person can understand. And you may not be able to articulate, you may not be able to express it in words. So it's even difficult to talk to person A, person B, person C, and, and, and tell them uh, uh, the pain, the grief, the confusions, or the thoughts, whatever you're going through at this time. It's difficult. But not so with God, because God knows. He knows the pain. Uh, even though you may not be art able to articulate it uh, or express it fully, he knows. And so what we can do is we can pray with whatever words we can put together, but we can also know and be assured that God knows beyond the words that we speak. God is touched by our feelings, not just by our words. But our words are important because to some measure, to some extent, you articulate it. You pour out your heart to God. You pray. But you know that your words are insufficient to express everything that you feel. And yet God knows not just your words. He knows your feelings. And that's pouring out your heart to God. Bearing your heart open before God. And say, God, you know how I feel. Uh, you know the pain of this loss. You know how I feel. The psalmist said in Psalm 61, verse 1 and 2, he said, Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. So there's the cry, there's the prayer. The cry is the expression of your emotions. The prayer is the words that you can use to try and express what you're feeling. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. And then he says in verse 2, From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, when my heart is overwhelmed, and he says, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He says, Lord, when my heart is overwhelmed, what will I do? I will cry to you. I will express my feelings, my emotions. I'll pour out my heart to you. My heart is overwhelmed by the loss, by the grief. I'll cry to you. And he says, Lord, lead me to the rock who is higher than I. That means you bring me to you. 
the place, the one in whom I can rest my entire self, the rock, symbolizing strength and stability and security, that I can just put myself completely on you. Lead me to the rock who is higher than I, much greater than me. So when my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, I will cry. Hear my cry. Hear my prayer. Bring me to this place where I can fully rest myself on the one who is higher than I. In Psalm 62, in the very next Psalm, and verse 8, the psalmist says, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Pour out your hearts, because God is a refuge. Pour out your feelings, your emotions, uh, whatever you're going through. The, uh, pour it out. He's our refuge. So, what's one thing we can do as in order to receive God's comfort in our lives? Is just to pour out and say, God, this is how I feel, Lord. Uh, help me. Comfort me. Give me your strength. Give me your courage. Fill me with your hope. Pour out your heart before God in prayer. The second thing is this, that what we can do as we go through grief, the loss of a loved one, is to remember and give thanks. Remember and give thanks. That means you remember the good things about that person. Remember the wonderful things that they either spoke to you or their life stands for or things that they shared with you. Remember the good things and give thanks for those good things. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4, the Bible, uh, of course, it's, that chapter is a chapter of faith and it's talking about all the heroes of faith. And uh, it mentions about Abel. It says in Hebrews 11 verse 4, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying to his gifts. And through it, he being dead still speaks. So what the writer of Hebrews is saying is, you know, he's pointing to Abel, he's pointing to his one, see about Abel, there's only one recorded work that he did. There's just a couple just, just mention of this, that Abel offered a sacrifice and God accepted it. That's all. So what do we know about Abel? He was a shepherd. He offered a sacrifice to God. God accepted it. That's all. There's just a mention of one good deed, one righteous deed that Abel did. That's all. And yet the writer of Hebrews is saying, you know, that was a work of faith. God accepted it, and though Abel is dead, he is still speaking to us by that deed that he did. He's still speaking to us, though he is dead. So I'm, I'm using this as an example, that when we think about the, our loved ones and look at their lives, that in all of their lives, there are things that they did, or maybe said, or lived by, or embodied, that are testimonies to their faith in God, which still continue to speak to us. And that's what we need to remember. We need to remember their testimony of faith. What are the things they did that talked to us about their faith in God? Things that were approved in the eyes of God. What are the things he did? So you remember those things, and then you give thanks to God for it. Say, so God, I thank you that this is something beautiful that he or she did, and, and, and it just blesses my life to remember that. You know, and the Bible teaches us that in everything to give thanks, 1 Thessalonians 5 uh, and verse 18, it says, in everything, and that means in the midst of every situation, you give thanks. So, even in the midst of grief, give thanks. And you say, what can I give thanks to God for? The memory of that person, the testimony of their faith, 
the life they lived, the, the, the things that they did for the glory of God, you give thanks for it. In everything, you give thanks. Because that's God's will. God's will for us is to give thanks in the middle of every situation. So give thanks. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 10 and verse 7, it says, the memory of the righteous is blessed. Or as, the, uh, as another version says, good people leave memories that bless us. So just remembering them is a blessing to us and something that we can give thanks to God for. So in those times of grief, think about the person, their life, the good things they did, the way they blessed your life, lessons that you can learn and how you can be encouraged through them, through their lives. So second thing. How do we draw comfort? We remember and give thanks to God. And you know, as we give thanks to God, it opens the doorway for God to work in our lives. Murmuring, complaining, bickering, being angry with God, it opens the door to the enemy and that's not what we want. But giving thanks, Giving praise opens the door to God for him to work in our lives. And you can give thanks to God for the good memories of the loved one who's gone on to be with Jesus. Give thanks for the good memories, for the life lessons, for the testimony of their faith. Give thanks to God. And that opens the door for God to work healing, strength and comfort in our lives. The third thing you and I can do to receive God's comfort in grief while we are grieving is to comfort ourselves in our future hope or in the hope that we have for the future. So as believers, you and I are people full of hope, not only for our eternal future, but also for our earthly future. And both are important. And as much as we look at eternity and we know that we have hope for eternity, we also have an earthly future that we have to live through. And thank God that as believers, we have hope for both our eternal future and our earthly future. And let me just remind you of scriptures for both. As far as the eternal future, the Bible tells us this, and the Apostle Paul wrote this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. And, and I just want to read it out for us, uh, even though we may be familiar with it. Because while Paul writes these verses and tells us this is what is going to happen in the future, he tells us that we can draw comfort for the present from this hope that we have. So let's read that, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Notice how he begins. He says, but I do not want you to be ignorant brethren. So he's writing to us believers. Concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. So he says, brothers, you know, when, when people we love, people we know, when they fall asleep, that is, they die, but that, for us, death is almost like falling asleep. He says, we don't have to sorrow, we don't have to have so much grief as those who have no hope. So hope sustains us in our times of sorrow. Hope undergirds us. This hope that we have sustains us and undergirds us in our time of grief. And that's the difference as believers because we have hope for the future. Now, what is the hope we have? He continues. He says in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. 
Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So he's saying, you know, we have this hope. So comfort each other with these words. So that's the third thing. How do we draw comfort from God with these words? With these words that describe the hope that we have for the future. That even though our loved ones pass away and they fall asleep, so to speak, and they go on and they are right now with Jesus. And when Jesus returns, he will bring them with him. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ will rise. They will rise up. They will be resurrected with glorified bodies. And are we, if we are alive at the time of the coming of the Lord, our bodies will be changed. And together with them, we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And we're going to be with the Lord forever. And he says, these words should bring us comfort so that we do not sorrow as other people who do not have this hope. So he says, comfort yourselves comfort one another with these words so how do we draw comfort from God by reminding ourselves of the eternal hope that we have when you think about your loved one and yes we we are the ones who feel the pain of our loss They've gone on. They've left us. We will never be able to speak to them, engage with them, interact with them, never hear their voice again in the natural. They've gone on. But we remind ourselves of the hope we have. Today, they are with Jesus. They are in the glorious presence of God. They are in another realm of reality that we've never experienced yet. And they are in a place of great joy, of immense glory. And they are with the Lord Jesus. They're with him. And also we have this hope that we will see them once again in a different realm. And we are all caught up to be with Jesus. We will see them. And so we have this hope and we say, God, thank you. I look forward to that day and that gives us comfort and we also have hope for our earthly future see sometimes as I mentioned at the very beginning when there's a loss of a loved one sometimes we'll get stuck in time they feel powerless to get up and move forward because perhaps their life there was so intertwined with this person whom they've just lost or the family member or loved one whom they've just lost and their life has been so connected uh, that the loss uh, leaves them in some way uh, powerless crippled uh, and uh, they don't know how they're going to be able to get up and move forward hope for the earthly future seems to have gone but as believers we know that God is with us because he said I will never leave you I will never forsake you he is with us and he still says I know the plans I have for you plans of great hope plans to bless you plans to prosper you to give you a future that's full of hope Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. So we, we draw strength, we draw comfort from the fact that God will take us through our earthly future. He will take us through. He'll take us forward. So we draw comfort and strength from that. But lastly, you know, we also draw comfort from other people around us. And this is something uh, God has designs. He's made us part of a body of believers. He's put us in families. He's put us with people around us so that, like we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, 
they can comfort us with the comfort which they themselves have been comforted when they went through their time of trouble. And so we must open our hearts to receive comfort through people that God has placed around us and also make ourselves available to people, to bear one another's burdens. In Galatians 6 and verse 2, Paul writes, he says, bear one another's burdens. That word there, burdens, talks about weights, things that are heavy, that come upon us. It says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That means that's you're doing what God wants you to do. You're doing what Jesus wants you to do. Bear one another's burdens. So there are times we just let others come alongside and help us carry our pain. Help us carry this burden that we're feeling. And there are times when we step into other people's lives just to help them, just to encourage them, just to be there for them. And so we do what Jesus wants us to do. We fulfill the law of Christ. So how do we receive comfort? We let other people come in and just step in and help us during this time. Just journey with us and receive the strength and the encouragement that comes through the body through friends, through people around us who can support us and help us through the season of grief. Now, for those of us who have to provide comfort, I just want to say two things. You see, many times we find it difficult to come alongside somebody who is grieving because we don't know what to say. I mean, what can I say that can ease their pain? What can I say that can fill the loss? Of course, nothing. We don't have to. Because the first thing we must do is just listen. Just make ourselves available. Just listen. Be willing to let them say what they desire to say. Or sometimes just being there is all they need. And then, secondly... So the first one is just listen. Just be there. Be available to listen. And secondly, say the simple things. Sometimes we're looking for something really deep and profound to say, hoping that something deep and profound will ease their pain. But really, it's not about the deep and profound things. It's just the simple things, saying, you know, uh, I'm, with, I'm with you. I... Uh, my condolences, my prayer, I'm standing with you. We are there with you. We'll, we, we're there to support you. We're there to help you. Simple things is what they need to hear in those times of grief. And just say simple things. We love you. You can do this. Keep moving forward. Be strong. Simple words but that will bring encouragement into the life of somebody who is going through grief. So... This message, comfort in grief. We learned today that God, our God, is the God of all comfort. We can draw from Him the comfort we need in whatever we're going through. We talked about four simple things that you and I can do to receive that comfort. One is to pray and pour out a heart to God. Tell Him what you feel. Let your cry and prayer come up to God as you, when you're overwhelmed. Secondly, remember and give thanks. Remember the testimonies. Remember the good things. Remember uh, the, the wonderful life the person has lived and, and give thanks to God for it. Thirdly, we draw comfort from our future hope, the hope that we have for the future. We draw comfort from that. And fourthly, we let people come alongside us who can help us bear our burden. Remember, our God is the God of all comfort, and He is our comfort in our time of grief.